A hurricane is looking more and more likely to form in the Caribbean over the next several days, potentially bringing a catastrophic flooding situation. This would be our first Caribbean storm of the season. It would be a tropical storm or Hurricane Karen. We're watching a tropical wave move into the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days. That will get into the Caribbean. It looks like this go-round, the escape route to the north, is blocked, at least for a time. And that puts many areas in the Caribbean at risk for high winds and flooding rains. Eventually, the system will move out of the Caribbean. Where it will go is still up in the air, as it has yet to form a cohesive center. But we are watching convection roll and rumble and bubble around this tropical wave there it is right here and you can see a little bit of maybe curvature to some of these bands that would indicate that maybe there's some mid-level circulation trying to form here so we're going to watch this develop over the next couple of days here but you can see here's our tropical wave here are the islands it is moving in this direction and it's going to get into some really really warm and deeply warm waters too folks so let's take a look at a couple of things here i want to show you shear this is the wind shear anomaly map where you see blues these are lower than normal shear where you see red this is above normal shear and look at this area here this isn't red this is where we have above normal shear currently today tropical wave is somewhere like right in here it's hard to see that let's make this yellow so we can see it a little bit better there it is right there and it's tracking into here and the shear is just to the north of this so watch what the european ensemble does with this shear over the next two weeks folks it keeps a shear axis just north of the islands here off the coast of Florida into the western Atlantic. So anything that moves in that direction would experience some shear and likely be tilted to the north and east over time. And that shear axis just sort of remains there until we get way out here to the end of the period. But what we're going to watch as we get into the uh, next couple of weeks is we've got a pattern change underway. The big storm system bringing lots and lots of rain and even some severe weather. That is what is the leading, essentially the leading edge of a brand new pattern. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. But shear is going to be a problem, anything that comes out of the Caribbean, which would be good news for the United States. But as far as the Caribbean goes, the GFS, we've rolled this along to five days out. This is Friday, October the 24th, so this upcoming Friday. We've got a hurricane forming here, already formed here just south of Hispaniola, bringing some heavy rain and wind into Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and this thing gets stronger and stronger. It moves over uh, the DR and then gets out of the picture and moves on to the north and then out to sea. The GFS has been resolute sending this system well out into the Atlantic and not really bothering anyone except for the Caribbean. That's the GFS. The European is a little bit different in its evolution. Here at five days out next Friday, again, it does not have a strong system, just a weak depression, but slowly strengthens it as we go on out into Sunday and Monday, October the 27th, into Tuesday, October the 28th. We start to get a hurricane down here in the western portion of the Caribbean bringing a lot of rain in here to Nicaragua and uh, places like that, folks. So we've got in Honduras, we've got a lot of rainfall. Then it comes into Cuba, smashes Cuba as a very strong hurricane, runs up into the Western Atlantic, gets near Bermuda, maybe right over Bermuda, and gets absorbed into this big cyclone at the end of the European run here off of, uh, in basically in the Northeast United States. That would be a very disastrous situation for you guys up there. Unfortunately, it's the European operational run, and we're looking at two weeks out, so there's no way that's going to turn out exactly the right way, but uh, how the model's seeing it now. But look at this. The GFS just obliterates portions of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico with over 20 inches of rainfall. This would be catastrophic and just devastating. Also, plenty of rain down here uh, toward uh, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and even into Venezuela and Colombia. We're looking at rainfall. If you look at the European model, not a lot better uh, in terms of uh, its depiction of rain. It's just more of the rainfall is associated with it out here in the center of the Caribbean. You still have plenty of rain here at Jamaica, up here into Cuba, and uh, portions of the coastal sections of uh, Honduras, and uh, then down here into Nicaragua as well, folks. So lots and lots and lots of rain are coming. And depending on how you switch these model runs around and which model runs you look at, it places the different rainfall axis in different places. But we're going to see a lot of wind should a hurricane develop on top of many, many inches of rain. Hard to pinpoint yet because the spread is still fairly great. If we take a look here at some of the ensemble loops, the deep mind has continued to show a fairly robust signal in its ensemble suite. All of these L's are the 
the different ensemble members. There are 50 ensemble members here for this particular model. This is a, an artificial intelligence model. And you've got several strong members out here in the Caribbean at the end of the 10-day period. This puts us out October the 29th. And still we've got members here sitting in the Caribbean. Some have left, like the GFS, and gone up to the north and to the east. And uh, that would be good news for the United States. But still, many members of the Google DeepMind show a lot of development down here. Same with the European Ensemble. They, at the end of the 10-day period, they've got most of their members still sitting here in the Caribbean. So this could go any direction at this point, folks, down here into Central America, even South America, even up into the northern portions of the Caribbean, and then potentially... You know, what happens later on down the road, you know, if this sits in here long enough, it could sneak into the Gulf. So a lot to watch as we get way on out in time. This, you know, this solution is still up in the air. And here's the GFS fishing in murky waters as usual. We just don't have a clue where to put this thing. And honestly, folks, any of these L placements could be correct at this point in time. Just a lot, a lot of variability here because the thing hasn't even defined itself yet. Once it becomes defined and we have a tropical depression to work with, we'll probably get a little bit better in, uh, agreement in terms of where this track is. Otherwise, it's just throwing a dart. But uh, either way, anybody in the Caribbean with interest down here, you need to pay attention. Let friends and family know you've got the potential for at least a a, 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 a strong tropical storm, potentially a significant Category Four three, four, five hurricane. I'm not going to rule out a category five. No model is really showing that, but it very, very warm waters down here, lower shear, especially in the southern portion of the Caribbean. So we've got to rule, uh, we've got to pay attention and not rule anything out at this point. So let people know, friends and family, a lot of rain potentially coming down here. As far as that actual uh, National Hurricane Center map, here's what it looks like, folks. We've got a 60% chance of this wave. There it is approaching the Antilles, developing once it gets in here. And that's the only game in town right now, but it's a big game and we've got to keep our eyes on it and we will. If you haven't yet subscribed, folks, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications. These things are changing rapidly, as is our pattern, and I'll keep you up to date. Like the video, leave a comment, let me know where you're commenting from. And if you have any friends down in the Caribbean, I'd be interested to hear about that. I can tell you exactly where, uh, the, what the weather will be for those folks too. If you have any questions about it, let me know. And if there's a prayer request, please put that in the comments too. I want to pray for you if there's anything going on in your life. Uh, right now, we're going to take a look at the pattern change that's coming to the United States because it is going to feel like fall in a real, real way. And it is coming right now. Got some rain and thunderstorms out there today. A little bit of a severe weather threat. Saw some severe weather yesterday. Our alerts map, though, today is highlighted with blue colors out here in the plains. These are frost and freeze advisories, and they will expire as it warms up out here. But certainly going to be a windy day across much of the U.S. And you can see wind advisories in the kind of the beige color and the orange or yellow, whatever you call this gold maybe, that will be uh, high wind warnings for winds gusting into the 40s, 50s, even close to 60 in spots. But wind advisories through the Ohio Valley and back into South Carolina where we tend to always have a wind advisory and red flag warnings for later on in the uh, period up here in uh, Vermont and places like that, folks. So that's what we've got going on out here today. Got a storm system working through. We saw severe weather yesterday. Hail and wind reports from Louisiana here. A couple of tornadoes here in Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas. Wind reports up into Oklahoma, back into Missouri, and into uh, parts of Illinois as well. Even Indiana and Michigan up here in lower Michigan, folks. We saw some wind damage up there from these severe storms. Not going to see as much severe weather out there today. Day, this system is starting to lose a little bit of its instability. We've still got plenty of shear, a lot of wind in the mid-levels, pretty dynamic system. It's pulling up into Canada. We'll see another maybe little surface reflection here uh, as we get on in through the next 24 hours or so, but this front will continue to push east, bringing a line of thunderstorms with it. More systems working into the west. That is going to be a common theme over the next couple of weeks. We're going to see rounds of rain and rounds of snowfall here in the higher elevations in the Rockies and the Cascades, the Olympics and the Sierra Nevadas are going to experience some snow. Get those uh, ski resorts out there primed and ready for winter ski season, folks. Looking here at our satellite image, 
take a look here and bring this on down where we can all see it together. There's our big storm system. You can kind of see the where the L is. The low pressure would be right here for cold fronts extending back down this way. Most of the convection's here centered around Mobile, Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and places like this. This is where we'll expect to see tornadoes potentially this morning as this line of convection moves through. Things will quiet down through the afternoon. It's kind of an unusual way to uh, look at convection. Usually it ramps up through the afternoon, but uh, most of the dynamics are pulling off to the north, so most of the real serious weather will happen this morning into the early afternoon hours and then kind of wind down. There's the other storm system moving into the west coast, bringing some clouds and rain up there. Here is the Storm Prediction Center today. We're looking at a marginal risk here from the mid-Atlantic up into lower New England, very, very close in here to Boston and places like New York City and uh, back down here into the Florida Peninsula this morning into the Panhandle here is what I meant to say. There's the Florida Peninsula. Here's the Panhandle over here, and that's where we're looking for a potential tornado threat this morning. Wind certainly is a possibility, and you can see a few tornadoes up here too, a couple anyway. Let's it refreshed on me. Let's go back. Uh, New York uh, City down into Jersey, Atlantic City, and uh, back up here close to Philadelphia. So we're looking at a potential for a tornado or two as moisture gets pulled in off the Atlantic. Fortunately, we just don't have a lot of instability here this time of year or, or this go round. I mean, we haven't had a lot of dew points returning all the way up uh, the coast this time with this particular storm, but there is a lot of energy in the mid levels to create a lot of spin. If we take a look at how this goes, over the next couple of days. Uh, we're going to watch the uh, storm system move through this afternoon. This is this morning. Low pressure pulling up. We're going to see rumbles of thunder here and there, but mostly just a line of heavy rain, gusty winds as this squall line moves through this uh, low top convection line, and then it extends down into the southeast, and really not a lot of rain associated with it down here, but we will see that front come through with some showers and occasional heavy bursts of rain, and it will die out mostly in the southeast as all the dynamics are pulling up to the north. And as we get through the overnight hours tonight, look for rain moving in through New York into the Mid-Atlantic. Atlantic region. This is where we could see a few, a couple of tornadoes spin up, some wind reports as more moisture gets pulled in off the Atlantic. Another system kind of hot on its heels coming in from the West Coast, moving through the plains overnight. We wake up tomorrow morning looking at rain up here in the Northern Plains, rain back into New York, all the way into the New England area, and uh, probably going to see some showers down here in Florida too, although not a really a big deal for you all down here. And as we get on into tomorrow afternoon, that rain will push up into Maine. And by the end of the day, it will be clearing out through the overnight hours and more rain coming back in through the Midwest into the Great Lakes. As you can see that spin moving in there and showers will be breaking out as we get into Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours back into the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic and interior northeast and parts of the southeast yet again as this system moves through, but it will not be as potent as what we just went through. Wind this afternoon looking at lots and lots of gusty conditions from essentially the Mississippi Valley and Midwest over into most of the northeast with the exception of the far northeast looking at gusts into the 30s potentially a few spots in the 40s as convection rolls through very windy out here ahead of this system that is tapping some winds in the mid levels of the atmosphere bring those down and you're going to see gusts into the 40s and 50s for parts of montana and into wyoming as well and then looking at this this is the dew point map folks look at this as this front moves through this afternoon look at those brown colors just blasting through. It's going to be dry. It's going to feel like fall. Behind that front, winds will shift out of the northwest. Another system working through as we get on into Wednesday, but just brings another shot of dry air to much of the nation, and that is going to definitely have that fall feel. It's going to feel crisp and very, very nice out there, even though the temperatures may warm back up a bit ahead of another system. Still going to be dry air. It's going to feel pretty good. So highs this afternoon, looking at the 50s across the north, 60s and 70s up here, all the way up into the northeast. And then we get into the 80s over here into eastern North Carolina, down in across the southern tier of the country, and then chilly back up in the northwest, particularly in the mountains. So we go out into tomorrow, a little bit cooler out here across the north, highs in the 40s. It's about where we ought to be this time of year in some of these spots in 50s and 60s warming back up in the plains 80s and 90s back into texas and uh, 60s and 70s along the east coast and as that front clears things will cool down just a little bit and that's the forecast for the next couple of days got a pattern change underway though and i'm going to show you what that looks like really quick what we can expect as we head out over the next couple of weeks
I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about this new pattern, folks. We have had this big pig ridge sitting right here in the center of the country, just baking you all with southerly flow and shutting down the Gulf. We haven't seen any good precipitation make it into the east all that much. And southeast is still gonna be hard pressed to find a lot of rain out of this pattern, but boy, oh boy, it is going to feel like fall. It's gonna be variable. The weather's gonna be interesting. We're gonna see warm ups and cool downs and storms move through. As a matter of fact, look at these blues. See this blue, this is that trough and that storm that's moving through today. It's kicked that ridge all the way up into Canada got another little ridge building behind but look at that another storm another ridge another storm another ridge another storm that's the pattern folks that we've got coming up and we're going to see unsettled weather lots of rain coming into the west coast and snow in the higher elevations look at that storm goes across the north another storm comes in meets up with a storm coming into California another system comes in slides across the northern tier amplifies a little bit here in the plains we get on out toward day 10 another storm big blocking up in Canada will slow if this turns out to be the case get this big block up here it's going to slow this storm system down. We could see an amplification of it in terms of a potential severe weather threat. And uh, if this hurricane comes out at the right time, it could get sucked in. But again, that's conjecture. It's way down the line. The bottom line is, look at this pattern, just one storm after another coming through the United States. And this is what fall is supposed to be like. It's supposed to be variable. And that's what we're seeing here on the uh, mid-level height anomaly map. If we take a look here at the temperatures at 850, kind of gives you a good proxy for what to expect at the surface. Reds are above normal. Blues are below normal. And look at this. We get on out here toward this afternoon. We see blues punching in. We're going to see a little bit below normal. That will uh, kind of moderate as time goes along, but another warm up and another cool shot coming into the Midwest and the Plains. And then more warm up out to the West. Another cool shot coming in. Look at the Northeast. It just sort of stays cool as we go on out in time. Get out here to nine, 10 days out. Another big blast of fall. Look at those purples coming in, folks. Going to get rather chilly in some of these autumn mornings that we experience as we get on to the end of October. That one makes it all the way down into Florida for heaven's sakes. And then we get another warm up and another blast of chilly fall air behind that warm up. So up and down we go over the next couple of weeks looking at total rainfall, the biggest rainfall signal here will be up from the lower Mississippi Valley up into the Northeast. We need the rain up there through the Great Lakes. That's good. We need the rain down here in the Southeast, but we've got a big X here where we're not getting any rain and plenty of rain coming in here to the tune of maybe six to 10 inches in some of these higher elevation peaks out here in the mountains out West, but certainly going to see rainfall out there. Here's where we have a kind of a big dearth of rain uh, in the uh, inner mountain West a system sort of jump across there. But uh, look what else we've got on the map, folks. What is that? That is snowfall. It's that time of year. We're looking at snowfall starting to pile up in the mountains out west as these storm systems move in. Even got a little bit of a signal. You can barely see it, but snow here in the Appalachians. It's time to start watching for that as we get into November. And we're seeing a few models start to hint at that. So we're going to be having some snowfall to track before too long. And boy, I'm going to tell you what, I think these lake effect snow belts really going to uh, crank up as we get later into fall and we start to get some real arctic air in the pack in the pattern folks so that's what we've got going on today that is your forecast and i hope it's been informative for you be back again tomorrow with a full episode of cold rains weather world we'll have your weather iq we'll look at space and geological weather see if anything's going on there too in the meantime hope you have a wonderful sunday afternoon take care and god bless